uh, the digging. No. for the leftovers of the carne asada from last night. You know how we do it. Don't let any of this go to waste. I want to take advantage of this time and ask uh, uh, Ray, because Ray, it's his first experience sleeping on the Opus. Ray, how did you do last night? You know, what was your personal experience with it? I slept really well. I was really surprised how, how comfortable the, uh, the mattress was on the end. I was expecting it to be thinner, not as uh, thick or as soft or as comfortable. <clears throat> There's a lot of air ventilation. I got cool a little bit last night. I had to cut myself because uh, the wind was coming in. I guess it did get cold, a little colder last night. It was roomy. There's a lot of space up there. The only thing I noticed is that uh, I'm six foot tall, so I kind of had to <laughs> lay in an angle. <laughs> but other than that, it was great. For us, you know, five foot six, you know, <laughs> short guys, it's it's perfect, you know. I mean, I, I can be, you know, just perfect in there. If you are taller, you're probably going to have to finesse and get a little bit of an angle in there. It's very well built. Yeah. Very sturdy. It was windy last night, and, and I didn't really feel anything didn't move or anything. I could hear the flapping, of course, but that's that's, that's normal. Flapping of these, this canopy, well, that's, that's going to happen. But everything is inside is really nice, it's sturdy, solid. I like it. It is very difficult for your average pop-up camper or RV to be able to make it out here, you know, with the weather that, you know, East Cut throws at you. Granted, we didn't have any Northerns or anything to really test it out, <clears throat> but it's still enough to shift the sands around here, and that wind was pretty strong last night. But otherwise, good God, man, what a beautiful, yeah. beautiful weather, beautiful time. Yeah. Really loved it. And this, make no mistake, this is not a traditional pop up. This is way up there <clears throat> above that level uh, compared to, you can't even compare this to, to a pop up. This is not a pop up. Hey, Eloy. Eloy, Eloy, Robert. Eloy. Nice to meet you, Lloyd. Nice to meet you, man. Well, we're doing Mexican uh, dad breakfast. Yeah. I just, I just ate some uh, sausage and egg. Ah, uh, okay, I'm okay. Hey, the electric going up. It's on. That's freaking dead. So what's happening? So let me show you something. You see those stabilizers down there? There's a set of four, and uh, I brought them down when I got here use this tool right here it goes right in the middle and uh, I use um, I use a uh, this thing right here an impact driver and I had charged a couple of extra batteries at home forgot them at home you know so the one battery that I had I used to do all the work all this time you know to set it all up and uh, unfortunately it's dead, I don't have a replacement. And now, you know, my son and, and uh, Noe over here are trying to figure out a way of how to charge up that one battery. Otherwise, it probably means, you know, me going all the way back to town to try to get a drill or something to make it work. Okay guys, so Noe and Robbie went ahead and, and started <laughs> messing around with this over here. Noe had the idea of like, hey man, maybe we could still, you know, charge it and bypass. And I used my vehicle battery charger, as you can see right here. And now we're going to put it to the test. It's been charging with the clamps going straight to the little uh, battery right there. 
Should we try it, Noe? Let's try it. One thing to take in consideration, because we did this earlier, yeah. we, we used a 24 volt, even though this is a 20, we used another battery with a 24 volt, this is a 12 volt. Yeah. So we slightly overheated it real quick and we disconnected. Now that's why we're using a 12 volt uh, charger to go with a 12 volt battery. So let's find out what, if it's working. It's not hot. Not, not, hot. not hot, it was hot before with the other one. So let's see. I have the, I have two, Still two have solids. Two. Yeah, I guess we can uh, continue. So maybe this is a good solution right here, man. If you ever find yourself in a uh, stupid Robertville, you know, where you forget your extra batteries or a charger, you know, this is a good idea. Well, right now it's uh, Noe and Robbie and Ray are gonna go ahead and they're gonna go try their luck surf fishing. The surf's where it's at. It's where they like to be. So I'm just gonna hang back and wish them luck. Go get us something. I rarely get a chance to fish the jetties, so I decided to stay close to camp and try my luck there instead. I'm gonna go ahead and See if I can throw this piece of crab. I don't know if I should leave the arm in there. Probably not the right thing to do, but I'm gonna do that. Huh, I should probably hook this through one of these legs. I think I've seen a couple of people do this out there, like Beach Bomber. And uh, let's see here. Whatever, dude, let's see if this works. Hopefully it won't come off as I'm chunking it. All right. Well, it went out there. It didn't come off. If you guys have been enjoying the series, I wanna tell you about the Coastal GX online store. Please check it out, it's in the video description and you'll be able to see a bunch of shirts and a bunch of other items that you can go ahead and purchase and help support the channel. As you know, <laughs> it does take a lot of money just to do basic things out here. I do it, it's a labor of love. And of course that's not gonna pay the bills, but it does help a little bit. Uh, I also wanna give thanks to Saltwater Samurai, okay, for providing us with some of the rigs that we've been using out here. They've done great you know, behave well, even though I haven't caught anything special, still, you know, it's easy for me who I am a novice angler. I don't know what I'm doing. So if you consider yourself kind of a beginner or even an expert and you don't want to bother and you do not want to go out to Walmart and buy some of the cheap stuff over there, you want to help a local business, somebody that is connected to you, that understands fishing, that understands what your needs are please check them out i'll have all the information for saltwater samurai rigs and weights they are awesome i tried different baits and lures all day long and had no luck still i had a ton of fun just being out there it was my birthday and my fourth day at the cut so things were pretty sweet okay guys so they gave it their all they tried the surf fishing as well. Want to say, but now it's time for them to go. Ray and Noe, thank you so much. You've seen them in all my videos and, uh, or many of my videos rather, you know, but Blue Lines 5.0, please go and subscribe to Ray and, uh, you know, Noe with his adventures with Mocha as well. Thank you so much, gents. Sure. Thank, you. We'll you. thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, thank you for the invite. It's too bad we didn't have the, too many fishes here, but oh well. It was so we fun. had fun, bro. That's what it's about. It's yeah. <laughs> have a safe trip back. Well, I couldn't come out here and not at least enjoy a little bit of the ocean, right? Nice. Total serenity, guys. Just beautiful. 
The only thing that would have made it a little better, actually a lot better, is if my poor wifey, Cassie, would have been here with me. But maybe next time, sweetheart. Otherwise, what a beautiful, beautiful vacation. Yeah, thank you, Tony, for providing me with a couple of pinguinos as my birthday cake. Have no candles, so I'm gonna have to improvise with some matches. There we go. What's the wish? My son is the only one here with me. So the wish is, I'm not gonna tell you. I'll tell you what's on the menu for the birthday dinner is gonna be some flounder, and we're gonna make some tacos, some flounder and some Spanish mackerel. We love Robbie's fish tacos so much that we just had to do a repeat for the last night. And uh, the flounder courtesy of Prodigy Fishing Team because, well, you know why. I wasn't, <laughs> I didn't get anything. Fresh, delicious flounder caught just a few yards away. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, good piece. What do you think, son? Really good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did great with the Spanish mackerel tacos last time that we just had to have a repeat, dude. This is really good, son. This one is not seasoned. It tastes good, but it doesn't taste as good as the seasoned one. But we didn't add any salt or anything like that. But the salsa is so dang good. We cleaned up after dinner and decided it was best for Robbie to spend the night inside the Opus for safety reasons. We were the only people left at the East Cut. Hey, good morning, guys. It is Monday, our very last day. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to shoot much. We had a good night's sleep, although the winds were blowing at like, I don't know, 22, 25 miles an hour. So that was kind of nasty. Um, we had a bunch, of, look, at, look at the way, I don't know if the camera will give it, do it any justice, but <clears throat> five days out here, strong winds what is that gonna mean it's gonna mean a lot of sand shifting okay and uh we had to readjust some things on the opus as you can see obviously we already broke it down to this point um we want to take advantage of good weather because we could see some showers out in the distance so we're trying to avoid that so thank god we we're able to bring everything down now we're faced with this other little dilemma. Now we have, <clears throat> when I unhitched, everything was fine. And now you have this hill over here. And uh, so we're gonna try to see if we can maneuver around it. And first to see how much of a difference there is with a hitch. And if not, we're gonna have to bring it up on the uh, up to level, maybe, I don't know. We're gonna try to figure it out. Yeah, so as you can see, yeah, we're still too off, way off, and the tongue's already at the highest point. I don't want to dig, you know, I'll tell you that much. I don't want to dig the tires. Uh, I guess I could, you know, you know, move the trailer back. That's one option, or I can move the trailer up, which is my preferred option right here. So let's see what we can do.
effects. Immediately made it worse. It's kind of digging in there. Now what we're doing is we just switched we just switched that um that hitch to Robbie's truck because it's lower in the back we think and we were able to lift you know the trailer a little bit higher those uh this really dug into the hole over here so just trying to improvise let's see how, how it goes yeah Robbie all right so it was a success uh connecting the trailer over here to robbie his truck is a lot flatter so at the end you know propping it up and everything just connecting it to his truck was a smarter decision just to get us the hell out of here to a safer spot where we can make that transition so he's gonna make some moves and uh let's get out of here Do it a little faster. A little faster and don't stop. Hey son, uh, how does the... Uh how does the Opus feel on your Ranger? It's got a four-cylinder turbo, but does it feel like like nothing? Yeah, like nothing. Nice, nice. So it's totally doable with your truck if you if that was the setup, right? Yeah. Hey friends. So what do you think? Five days out here uh, at the most, well, probably the most remote area that you can find here on South Padre Island. Uh, boondocking, you know, for several days has been quite interesting. Uh, who knew that the, all the drama was gonna be at, at the very last moment, right? Well, and the trip's not even over because we still have to switch. Uh, Robbie's just getting the, the vehicle out of here. Gonna find a spot where it's gonna be a little easier to uh, do the transitioning and hitch up to uh, Sandy here. I, I guess I, I should have taken into account, you know, the shifting sands and I knew that that was happening, but I didn't think much of it. I was like, yeah, we'll figure it out. We got all the tools to get it done. Of course, it was more of a pain in the butt than anything else, um, but anyway i want to give a huge shout out to every single one of you guys that was able to make it out here and introduce yourselves say hello and uh some of the friends that were able to spend some time with me you know like john paul like uh tony rivera aj uh and of course the prodigy fishing team uh all of you guys really made my day thank you so much oh Cindy and Brian from uh, you know teacups and candles as well all right thank you so much for showing up uh, y'all made it more colorful I really appreciate it you know uh, what a way to celebrate the big well I'm not gonna tell you how old I am let you guess I'm sure you'll figure it out but anyway heading home love you so much take care of yourselves get up get out do something <laughs>